Welcome to Platform Media International. My name is Joe Ehizode. Today, we are resuming our preview and review of English Premiership um, uh, football season and also across the globe. We are also going to be taking out, talking about uh, the preparation for the African Cup of Nations as all the countries had an engagement last weekend. Um, my very good friend is in the studio tonight, TC from uh, Toronto, Canada. TC, how are you? I'm doing good, Joe. How are you doing? And how is Vancouver? Exciting to be here. Uh, I'm excited to be here, Ms. TC. Um, yeah. For some reason, um, technical difficulties and engagement, we have been uh, distracted. And we have failed our teaming supporters. I think we need, they need an apology from us, TC, me especially. Yeah, we do need to apologize to them that we have been off air for quite a long time. And uh, we are back now. We sincerely apologize to them that uh, we will keep the momentum going so as to serve them with the best of sports across the globe. Let's get down to business, TC. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the predictions or the the kind of uh, surprises that is associated with English Premiership has not ceased. And um, when the fourth week, um, <laughs> things are happening, uh, results are tumbling and surprises are all over the place. We just yeah. watched Manchester United go down one three to Brighton. Yes. Uh, uh, Manchester City struggled. Um, fell behind uh, against West Ham and uh, Newcastle and uh, the other team is just going on around now, but we don't know the results yet as yeah, well as okay. Newcastle is uh, ongoing. This yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. What is going on? Uh, despite the money that these teams have spent, um, there's not much of a gap between the big teams and the teams that are not spending so much. Look at Manchester United, look at Man City, look at Arsenal. Is it, what is the reason? I, I quite agree with your opinion, Joe, that uh, the smaller clubs are getting on and catching up with the big four or the big six, as we may know them to be. Um, it's a very big surprise to see a Brighton team that they are, Total monthly salary is uh, not even one quarter of what the wages of the Man U players are. Um, players in the smaller club are getting more enthusiastic, more ready to play, more ready to win for their clubs. And I think it's just all about complacency about the big and established clubs. Take a team like Man U, for instance, which Casimero with Bruno Fernandes and uh, going to play a team that has the only big player that you know of in, in uh, the branching team is uh, even an ex Man United striker, Danny Welbeck, who scored the first goal. So it is all about complacency. I think then again, it is all about the tactical discipline of the team that is coming from the coach. Um, Man you cannot run away from the problem or that they have crisis. Look at what happened to Greenwood. Look at uh, what happened to Antonio. So they can't run away from all those crises affecting the team. And um, you have a striking problem. Marshall is not playing to his full capacity in the last two seasons. And... Uh, you still keep on investing money to bring in new players like the Danish striker that was uh, played Pleasure. today. Yeah. So then you go to Liverpool. Liverpool also started very badly this morning. They considered the first goal only to come back. You will understand that there, there, are, there are crises in all of the big clubs. The problem with Liverpool is the fact that Salah wants to leave, but they don't want him to go. His mind is not in Anfield anymore. But he played, he played well. 
Yeah, he played well today. He was the, he created the three supports for the goals. Um, he's a very disciplined player. He's still committed, but you can see from his body language that uh, he's done with Liverpool. He's a Muslim. He wants to go to Saudi Arabia. There is no doubt about that. If uh, the club allowed him to go, um, you go to City. City also started from behind today and uh, came back to win. So it's uh, the big clubs are losing the the, the, the flesh. Hey, this is, let me stop you. You have not said anything about Arsenal. Why? Arsenal, Arsenal, is, just... is, playing, Arsenal is playing tomorrow. We are not. Uh, no, they are not talk about today. the four, four games they played. What's going on? They are they are still they are still not on the best around of though. The problem the problem with um, Arsenal is tactical discipline too. I don't know what um, Ateta is going to achieve by experimenting players, um, playing a party in the right full back position, fighting Gabriel and not wanting to play him, bringing personal issues into the team tactics. And we saw the game that. The guy played. We also saw him play for Brazil at the international break. So if, if a player is good and you don't like him, you don't have to allow that to, to come into your team selection. I don't know what Kai Avard is doing in Arsenal. I don't know why he's playing. Um, but um, Ateta kept, has uh, kept to his uh, promise to him that he's going to have a first team shirt. Um, Comparatively, we, we don't even have to have sold, um, what's his name now? This is our midfielder from Switzerland. Zaka. Zaka. Eh? Rana Zaka. Yeah. You, you can't even compare Zaka, Zaka to, to Kai Fada Hernandez. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not, they are not in the same world. They are not in the same class. So, and for that kind of a guy to be playing, and you have the likes of Giorgio, you have the likes of Polo Vieira on the bench. Ateta must be explaining to management why Abi must explain to management his preference for Kai Abad. Um, he's the only, he's the only all in the Arsenal team. And uh, then in the central defense, trying to fight Gabriel and not play him uh, because the guy. Okay, okay. Tissi, Tissi, give it to one team. I just watched Brighton. Mm -hmm. Most Manchester United players all around the pitch and they were beaten decisively 3-1. Brighton mm -hmm. has become an enigma in the Premiership. Um, mm -hmm. Look at it. Casado left. Yeah. Ben White left. Mm -hmm. McAllister left. All these big players left, and this team is playing wonders. They are defeating all commands in the Premiership. This is, and this coach of Brighton uh, is, is still telling the players, look at today, he benched six regulars and mm -hmm. brought a team up that beat Manchester United. So, yeah. like I just mentioned to one of my friends, it is not the it is not buying the talents that matter. Coaching matters too, and this is an example of that statement. The coach of Brighton. Do you are what is your view about that? Joe, I agree perfectly with you. The coach is the manager of the team. He decides who plays and who does not. The coach takes responsibility for defeat and victory. The coach is the one that has the master plan of how he wants the team to play. So the guy has experimented severally on, when they went on uh, the playing tour of uh, Germany before the start of the season. He has seen players in different diversion. Look at the last two matches. Um, well back is not there. He had an injury. He played somebody else. Today he played six new players. And they gave him the result. So again, a lot depends on the coach and the tactics that is played. And like I gave the example of uh, the Arsenal coach, Mike Ateta, you don't bring personal issues into team selection. If a player is good, he's good. Whether he is your friend or whether he has personal issue with you, does not matter. What the team achieved collectively is what is most important. 
So if you don't like a player because he's outspoken, it is very good for you to play in your tactics. Look at the first two or three matches Arsenal played. How can you just convert a perfect defensive midfielder who has also scored goals to play at the right fullback position when you have the Ben White? That is okay. A full listen, back play. Listen, two issues there. I know you have your ears to the ground in Arsenal because I know you are an unrepentant Arsenal supporter. That, that's there's no doubt about that. Listen. Mm -hmm. What is the issue that Arsenal, uh, Ateta has against uh, Gabriel? One. Two, what strategy is, uh, is your coach using to, uh, in this season? Um, <laughs> party being shifted to number two. Although he disagrees that uh, party is not a, reg a regular kind of traditional number two, that when they are, when they are, uh, when they are attacking, he shifts to the midfield. But you can see that party is struggling with that strategy that Ateta is playing. Why is he not changing? What does these coaches see that we don't? What do they see that we don't? That, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, Joe, again, you are perfectly right here. Yeah? Party is not a traditional fullback. He's a defensive midfield player. He can also play in the attacking midfield. And you want him to play as a right full back and switch into the midfield when Arsenal is attacking. Then you are leaving a gap at the right full back position, which has caused Arsenal goals, right? Because first, first minute, first minute, first minute yeah. goals three times. If, yeah, if we switch, if he switches to the midfield when we are attacking and we lose the ball, by the time he wants to recover and call back, damage has been done. So why? Do you have two rightful back players who are registered for the season? They are fit. They, are, they don't have injury. You have a Cedric and you have a Ben White. So why are you experimenting playing party in that position? When you can play party in a regular position so that it can give you results. But you want to play a Kai Avers and you suddenly decide that you cannot do without a party in the team because Arsenal players say they want him. He wanted to sell party at the how beginning. About, of the how about the school of thought that he wants to justify the reason why he spent so much money on Kai Havers? That's why he's giving him time because he cannot just he cannot defend it that he has somebody that so much money has been spent on on the bench, even when the guy is not producing. Well, okay, why in the first place do we go for Kai Havard to buy Kai Havard and lose and lose better players that can play in the midfield? Now, what was Kai Havard doing in Chelsea last season? If he was that perfect and that good, Chelsea won't sell him. I saw an argument he made online that the fans, you guys, Arsenal fans, should be patient. Because when he bought Ramsey as a goalkeeper, people did not believe in him. When he bought Je Jesus, people did not believe in him. When he brought Ben White from Brighton, people did not people did not believe that Ben White will accept that people should be be patient with Kahava, that Kahava will prove itself. Is that is that the legitimate argument? No, it's not. You saw the last match that we played. Kai Avard was in front of the goal. The ball was on his left leg. He could not even score that goal. He, 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 said, he said he said he's, uh, he's lacking confidence that he will get the confidence back. Okay, when are we going to get that confidence back when the league cannot wait for you? If you lose a match in the Premiership, you have to win two for you to get in a position to fight for the first, first four. So when you lose a match, that you are not supposed to lose or you draw a match that you are not supposed to draw, then you have lost gap with the team at the top. City has a five win record already, 15 points, they are going. If the you start losing think... matches, you will lose grip of them. And before you know it, the league is done. Do you think that Ateta is a good apostle of Pep Guardiola? Because all these packages that have made very popular 
Ateta is, um, I can say, is a copycat. Is he, do you think he will succeed with that strategy now? Asking? Joe, again, you are very right. Is a copycat of Ateta, of Pep Guardiola. But you don't have the kind of players that can do that. Look at what Pep did to Kai Walker. He told us last season that Kai cannot play his <coughs> three man defensive <coughs> excuse me, arrangement. Now he has changed his pattern this season to play for, and Kai is playing as he is even the captain of the team. He just signed another contract with the team. Ateta does not have players that he can experiment with. Look, let us not pray for injury. If Saka or Martinelli are down with injury, the Arsenal is done. So that is what I thought. I thought you guy has Arsenal um, made a lot of good signing. They said that uh, Saka Saka has a. Uh, a good uh, um, support from uh, uh, your the, the boy who graduated from the um, from the uh, uh, junior team. Uh, what's his name? Um, the uh, yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah. In, on the left wing, Martinelli will be supported by Vieira or whoever. So yeah, um, that's not Vera exactly is not so for players this season as they used to be. No, Vieira is not the one that can support Martinelli on the left. It is um, Trosha. Trosha. Yeah, Trosha and the Belgium. Yeah. The Belgium. Yes. As in the midfield, the attacking role, we have invested over 100 million pounds on rice. He's playing well, but um, Giorgio can support there. On the side of uh, Saka, Vieira can support there. Okay. In your estimation. The problem, the, just one second. The problem with Arsenal this season is not about those players playing in the midfield. It's playing the proper players in the midfield. Party is not a defender. Strikers are okay. They are playing well. We have been scoring goals. Defenders should not be punished because they are outspoken. Gabriel was one player that played every game in the Premiership last season for Arsenal. All of a sudden, because there was an argument on the training ground, we started benching him. The same William Saliba that you condemned last season and was ready to throw him out, you are now saying is your savior. Coaches have to be consistent about the performance of their players, not for personal aggrandizement. No. OK. Um, remember that Paul Guardiola also did that to the Portuguese. Um, uh, uh, was it the one that was sent to um, Barcelona after he didn't do well in uh, Bayern Munich? Because yeah. Canelo, Canelo, whatever his name mm -hmm. is, um, he, he, they had they had a bus stop in the training ground. They never forgave him. Pep Guardiola yeah. never forgave him. And again, uh, the other guy, at, they seem to manifest the same attitude. Remember the spiky head guy who went to Marcel because they would bust up on training. Yes, uh, what's his name now? Yeah. Uh, Gendouzi. Gendouzi. I yeah. think I never forgave him. Is that yeah. how to make your mark in the team? That is the difference between Ateta and Pep. You, might, Pep. Be the, you might be the worst of Pep friend but if you are good enough to play in the team you will play no pep pep, pep sent canelo to to bear money because he was because he challenged his authority so they are the same no uh yeah well uh, i don't know whether he challenges authority but again he had a better player in hockey than that guy mm. but then i don't know whether there was crisis between them but then you might be right so Adeta is copying everything to the book about Pep then, if that's if what? Pep does that too. Okay, one question I want to ask you, in your estimation, between Party and Rice, who's better? Party and Rice as defensive midfielder, Party is better. Party Why? and 
why why do you think uh, uh, Ateta is not it's not the it's not in the fancy book of Ateta? Rice can play in both roles. He can play as a defensive midfielder. He can play as an attacking midfielder. But party can only play as a defensive midfielder. Okay. Now, so that's the difference now, between the two of them. One thing, one thing that the one thing I want to discuss with you, um, is you are you are a good student of um, of sports. You you are a veteran in that direction. Why is it that in most in Premiership League, as African players have been sacrificed for different positions? I don't make allegations lightly. I make it with the evidence. Um, uh, <laughs> look at it. Let's start with Turi, uh, uh, Yaya Turi. Mm -hmm. Yaya Turi, Pep Guardiola in Barcelona, was a midfielder, as accomplished midfielder. But the year mm -hmm. they won the Championship League, <laughs> Yaya Turi was the number five. Remember that? Yeah. OK. He came. To Pep in, in City and uh, Pep Guardiola even tried that in defensive mid, uh, as a defensive midfielder, but uh, Yaya Touré pros prospered as an attacking midfielder. Um, mm -hmm. I get, now come to Mikel, Mikel Obi. Mikel mm -hmm. Obi was an attacking midfielder. Jose Moreno dis destroyed him and became a defensive midfielder. You remember him? Mm -hmm. Ati, good defensive midfielder. Atatia is not turning him into a winger, a flying winger, whatever, or number two. Mm -hmm. Why is it that African players have been sacrificed? Why are they not assertive? Why don't they? Because I learned that party had a, had a discussion with Atatia this week, and uh, Atatia was saying that maybe in January, a party will be shifted off so maybe to Juventus or to Saudi Arabia. What was the reason? Are they now thinking that we're African players are very resourceful or they are being undermined? I, I think the, the, the problem is African players have been undermined. You gave the example of Yaya Ture. Yaya was a pure 97% attacking midfielder. But because some of these coaches want to play their kings or their fellow Europeans, they push. African players away from role to create all that their fellow Europeans can play. That's a fact. You mentioned Mikel, Mikel Obi. Jose Mourinho destroyed me, Mikel. Mikel was the second best player at the 2007 Under 20 World Cup in Holland. Where um, Leo Messi. Messi was the best player, and Taye Taiwo was the third best. I wasn't told I was there in Holland. So, Mikel flourishes as an attacking midfielder to the level that people who watched Nigerian games at that time were wondering this is the new Pele. But when Mikel went to Chelsea and Morio came, Morio changed him to be an attacking, a defensive midfielder. And for almost two seasons, Mikel was lost. He, he didn't know what to do. So uh, coaches in European League, Premiership, or whatever, destroy African players to create position for their kings particularly players that they know, look, with this person, this person cannot play. Ateta is creating a situation where he will frustrate party out so that he can justify the signing of Kai Abad. Ateta is creating a position where he can frustrate party out so that Giorgio, Vieira, Trochard, can have an opportunity to play. Okay. Well, so, well that, is, um, that is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, we're short of time now. My producer just mentioned to me that we are, let uh, have some few seconds to go. Um, 
what is your cap your capital with your with your uh with your experience what the what the premiership hold for fans and what are the predictions this year what do you what's going to be the highlights what do you think will be the highlight of this season uh Tito? well if, if city continues to play like this i don't see anybody stopping them winning the league that's one for the first for this season it will be city liverpool um Spurs and Arsenal. Man U is not there now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um okay, for me the highlights this season is that the big teams will suffer. That's that's the highlight. So mm -hmm. it's like Brighton. I'm surprised that you're not you're counting Brighton out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. see, apart from City, I don't see any team that's gonna be that's gonna actually be better than bright in this season but the, let's, the, let's the, keep our hands crossed I, I want to thank you uh tc for being back to the studio uh more ap our apologies to our fans who have been uh, who have been sending messages across that they want to hear from us um we're here we're back again i promise uh this will be a regular uh occurrence and uh, we're back in the studio we can see we have a, a very functional a studio behind us, and we're back and strong. I want to yeah, thank TC. TC, um, thank you for sparing your time for speaking to us from uh, in Toronto. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and how's the weather there, TC? Oh, it's hot. Hot? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> that's surprising. In September, where mm -hmm. we are in the where the this um, summer is uh, is petering out, and <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> one Friday next week. We are going to be wearing the jackets, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And to our viewers around the globe, this is Platform Media International Sports PMI. I'm your sincerely Joe Izode. Uh, catch us on Facebook. We have an account there, live um, uh, uh, stories on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we also have changed to threads too. We're also in threads. And uh, you can always catch up there. We'll be back next week. And hang up there, and uh, don't don't change the dial. Uh, uh, next week, catch us at the same time. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye.